Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how an ion trap works using a regular physical ball and a rotating saddle. In order to do this, you need a saddle shape like this. You can 3D print it or you can make one. The radius of the saddle shape has to be the same order of magnitude as the radius of whatever ball you use. And then you just need a rotating base like this. What I have here is just a cheap pottery base spinner that you can adjust the speed with this knob here. And then I just 3D printed the saddle and I put it on here like this. I'll put the STL file in my description so you can 3D print it if you want to. And then this is just one of these Spalding Super Bounce Balls. Now regularly when you put the ball on the saddle it rolls off. There's no stable point that it can stay in the middle here. You can see that there's no stable point. I can't get it to balance in the middle. Wherever I put it, it falls off. But now watch what happens when I spin it. Look at that. It balances in the middle. So now it's completely stable in the middle just because I'm spinning it. So why is that? I can even nudge it a little bit. And it stays stable. You'll notice that it doesn't just stay there because the saddle's spinning fast. If I spin it really fast, you'll see that the ball isn't stable at all. It just flies out. And also, if we do it too slow, it's not stable either. It falls out as well. You have to get it just right at the right frequency for it to balance in the center. Now, theoretically, if this were a frictionless surface, then there would be a certain threshold that you can spin the saddle, and above that, the particle will be trapped. You can calculate this using this equation where H0 is the height of the saddle above the center of the saddle, and R0 is the radius of curvature of the saddle. But of course, this isn't a frictionless surface, so you can't just spin it at any arbitrarily fast speed. If you do, the ball immediately flies out. So if we do it too fast, doesn't stay in at all. So in order to keep the ball in the saddle, you have to time it so that by the time the ball starts rolling down the slope, it will be nudged back towards the center at the right time by the spinning uphill portion of the saddle. This nudging needs to happen at twice the natural frequency of the ball rolling down the saddle. This is because for small oscillations, the motion is described by a set of differential equations where resonance occurs at twice the natural frequency or some factor of that. So I just needed to calculate the natural frequency of the ball. If I just let the ball roll down the saddle, I get a natural period of four hertz. So it will bob back and forth about four times per second. But if I set the turntable to that rotational speed, it wasn't stable. The ball just fell off. That's because as it's spinning, there's a Coriolis effect that pulls the ball outward, effectively lengthening the natural period of the ball. So using some trial and error, I found that the correct and natural frequency of the ball to be only about one hertz. So that means if I turn my table at around 2 hertz or 4 hertz, I should be able to get it to be stable. Finally, I got it to be stable at around 4 hertz. I can even nudge it and it stays stable. But that meant that it's only stable for this specific ball. If I did it for another ball at this same speed, it wasn't stable again because the natural frequency would be different. So you can see these balls don't work. So this saddle shape is basically what's called a quadrupole gravitational potential. So as you rotate this gravitational potential, the ball is subject to alternating repulsive and attractive forces. When it's rolling down the saddle, it's repulsed from the center, and when it's going uphill, it's attracted to the center. So if you can time it just right, the periodic force towards the center and the repulsion away from the center get timed just right to nudge it and pull it and nudge it and pull it in the exact natural frequency of the ball so it stays right in the center. This experiment took me a long time to get just right. You have to get just the right frequency of rotation with the right saddle and the right ball to get it to work correctly. But once you find it, it's pretty easy to get the ball to stay in the gravitational trap. And what's really cool about this is this experiment is comparable to something called a Paul trap where you can trap ions. So in a Paul trap, instead of having this gravitational quadrupole, what you have is an electric quadrupole potential. And you can actually trap charged ions in the center just like we trap in this gravitational well. In a Paul trap, what you're doing is instead of spinning something, you're alternating the electric fields so they go positive, negative, positive, negative, so it's attractive and repulsive at different times. And if you match it just right, you can actually get the ion to stay right in the center of the trap, just like we were able to get the ball to stay right at the center of our gravitational trap.
So even though we have two completely different forces, gravity and the electric force, we can do basically the same experiment. Because when we have an uphill, it's attracted to the center, and a downhill, it's repelled from the center. It's the same as having an attractive electric force and a repelling electric force. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.